All right, before you actually glue the damper felts onto the damper heads, we need to work with a few items. The alignment jig that you saw earlier, a small square, these are great, this type. Anywhere you can find this, get this. I might have a source for you later. And a little block that we sit on the strings to simulate the dampers because with the damper heads on the strings without the damper felts it doesn't give you the truest picture. This is a beautiful steel block but it could be a little piece of maple as long as it's square and it's about uh, maybe five sixteenths of an inch tall here. But that's not, that dimension isn't critical. Also a screwdriver for damper screws, the set screws. You could use duckbill or parallel pliers for that if you like and wire bending pliers. Now there are three orientations that are critical. Travel, that is how the damper travels straight up and down in the guide bushing. Squareness of the head, we've talked about that earlier. Bring this up here. The close we can get so you can still see. Now this is the neck bend and that refers to the third thing which is spacing of the damper heads themselves in relation to the strings. That is done with the neck bend. That's the only reason for the neck bend as a matter of fact. It has nothing to do with travel. Right? Again, so the three items travel in the bushing in relation to the block on the bottom, squareness of the head to the string and spacing of the damper head to the strings. Those are our three items. All right, we take a damper off our holding rack and in the same orientation that it's going to go in the piano, in this particular case, these are tenor dampers, so they're going to sit this way with the neck bend coming out towards the right, the treble. Put it on our block here and at first glance this looks pretty good, so I'm not going to make a squaring bend here. Now remember, not a neck bend. A neck bend is for spacing the damper head left to right, but that the side of the damper head itself is parallel with the side of the, or with the wire I should say. And it looks pretty good for starters. Now, we're going to go in the piano and I'll change the camera position so you see what's going on. What you see in the picture, looking at it from the treble side of the piano, is our little steel block right here, which simulates our damper felt. And here's the damper we're trying. And you will develop a feel for pushing down on that so it feels like it's sitting on the block very well. Next thing is you put your square in place and take a very close up look. Make sure your lighting is good. And right now what I see is that this damper head is leaning towards the right. It is not square. But I'm going to leave it alone for the moment and go inside the piano and show you what's going on going on there. All right, what is very obvious right away is that our bottom part of our damper wire here uh, is not anywhere near centering to where the hole is. So this would bind if I were to drop it into that hole. In fact, I'm going to try that here in a second and show you what I mean. There we go. Now I can feel a lot of resistance pushing this down. So I know it's binding in the block. I'm going to go to lift it out, even without the screw tightened. You can see that it's lifting the whole block and lever and everything. This is clearly wrong. Also, that kind of situation causes improper travel on the top. That is, you will see two damper heads either moving away from each other or toward each other as they rise together. And that becomes very obnoxious when the whole system is being pumped by the sustain pedal. Now to correct the situation, you can see how freely this drops in there now. It's not lifting the flange, the, the block at all. That's how it should be. And in order to get it that way, I made an upper bend 
that brought this jog to the left and then straightened it out and I say that in quotes to bring this jog and this leg down. Now it's not exactly what you might call a parallel jog because this block notice is sitting a little bit funny and we went all through that earlier you know as we traveled all the blocks and aligned them this is the best that this can be all things considered so even though it doesn't look like this wire this wire is exactly as free as this one that's all we that's all we need to know right now so it's free in there and uh, I'm gonna lightly tighten that screw and go back to the top square off the damper head itself and then push them up and see how they're traveling okay I squared off the damper head with a little square sitting on the strings and it didn't take much all I had to do was pull this up a little bit and tweak it in that direction remember you're trying to t uh, turn the head only in that direction not affect the wire below the neck bend in addition to that I'm lifting the tray Let's see if I can get this for you I don't know if that comes out in the video or not, but there's no traveling funny stuff going on. Let's do another one. Okay, we take our next damper off, to, off our holding rack and put it on. First thing we see is that the wire is coming off at an angle here. It really needs to be more like this. So, this is simply a matter of doing that really and uh, I'll do a little more off camera where I can actually deal with it better a little bit more all right this represents obviously the strings and right about here would be our damper guide bushing and this this is the kind of relationship we want a square bottom of the damper head and a perpendicular condition at the bushing. Now we can try this. Incidentally, if you pick up your dampers, make sure to check for loose heads. And if they are loose a little bit, take an appropriate punch. Take it over to your bench. Take a little punch and push it right down. Punch it right down right there. And if you need to, Put a little drop of thin CA glue. Make sure that these heads are tight on their wires. Next thing is we want to put it in in the piano through the bushing and have it sit on that steel block in order for this damper to drop down freely. My uh, pointer here. You can see that we're parallel to the line here. Then we have a jog and another one. Uh, I can see that others I'm going to start the top top jog up a little higher because this, this little jog here is a little too close together between the top and bottom bend but uh, this now drops directly right into the flange no problem at all the block I should say here it is from underneath perfectly free incidentally if you need to enlarge these holes even in the new blocks so that these wires are free feel free to do that. Make sure that the screw is back down so you don't run your drill into it. Of course this would have been done uh, in one of the very first steps after taking the uh, the back action out of the box. Make sure the screw is back down so you don't run your bit into the screw and don't run it down so far that you hit the center pin of the um, sostenuto spring tab. Okay, let's do another. I'm beginning to pick up a pattern. Uh, this doesn't look bad here. And we come all the way down to here before we begin to see the hint of a jog. But then this piece just runs off to the left. And everything I've done has required everything to be more this way. So I'm going to increase this jog a little bit and this one a little bit and take a good guess on what might be happening. That, of course, is done with these pliers. So let's do this. A 
then this. A little more. Okay, we'll give this a try. See how it works. Okay, I was close, but what finally was required was that this leg right here, rather than being parallel with this one, had to actually uh, be oriented a little bit more that way. And in this particular bending pattern, it drops right into the flange block, no problem. All right, one more start to finish. I need to square this up a bit. Okay, that's a good start. See that it wants to have a, a jog in here, but we can't trust that. And here we see the trial damper sitting on the steel block right there. And if we carefully go in, key bit here we see a situation which has been showing up the whole time it's off it needs a top bend and a lower bend for that to come directly down in that hole all right I need the camera off center so that I can work but you saw the improper orientation depending on how long your arms are actually I can reach over the top I'm kind of squatting down in a bent knee position some of you would be sitting, depending on your uh, preferences and so forth. But I'm going to make a bend at the top first, right about here. And then try to keep these things lined up, these bends lined up. Take this bottom one, go right about there, and then push this block back. And see if I can get this in the hole without taking 10 minutes. There we go. Okay, now, I can see that as I push down, it's trying to push the block to the, to the right, which means I need to move or take some of this out down here, a tad more. It's a... Uh, That's it. And because of the block orientation, it looks a little looks a little bizarre, but that's the one right there. Coming back at the top. My damper head actually is sitting pretty square after all that. Try not to be too clumsy with this. So that's how it's done. Okay, once the dampers are square, traveling well, it's time to have a look to see how they line up as far as being centered over the string. Now this pencil point is pointing to one damper head. If you look closely, you can see that it's not really centered that well over the string. It has a tendency to be parallel with the rightmost string of the unison and hanging over the left string a little bit. Now in order to make this evaluation, the one next to it looks similar, you have to make sure that you align these damper heads very well or you won't be able to tell. Now this is especially critical in the tenor part of the scale because you're going to have bichord wedges in here somewhere you can get away with the damper head being a little bit off where there's only flats in the front, flats in the back, but where wedges exist you have to be much more fastidious in taking care of this. So we're going to move this particular damper to the, let me get this right here, space it to the right. In fact you can see a little bit bigger space between the, the, the damper that we're going to move and the one to its right. So we have some room there. So neck bends are what actually space dampers to the strings. Now in order for me to move this damper head in that direction and yet still keep
keep it square to the damper wire, I need to make this neck bend here. Now this is the point where it's bent, not up here under the block, but right there. Now those who do this out of the piano and take a good guess use pliers, special pliers. I don't use those pliers. In fact, I make most of these neck bends in the piano, but I just wanted to demonstrate it out of the piano for now. And Okay, your eyes aren't deceiving you. I just backed up the camera. Now I grip the damper at the wire with these types of parallel pliers, which you really should have. And I work with this tool a lot because I do a lot, most neck bends in the piano, not out, but I'm just making the demo here. Now let's see if we can come in closer. Hang on. That might work. First bend is I want to straighten this angle. Just I want to make it less severe, right? So let's do that. You see that now, in here, I want to bring it back to square with the head. That looks pretty close. We'll check it on the block. Looks like I can make that a little bit better. Now the effect of those two bends was to move this damper head. Let's come back in. The damper head is now moved closer to the wire in that direction. So I have basically the mechanical term is translation. This has been translated from where it was over here, I'm exaggerating, to this to this setting. Here's our corrected damper head. The pencil point is still pointing to it. And you can see that it is centered much better on that string, that unison. Now doing it in the piano is another technique you should know. All right, here we see a damper. And it has a, a very shallow neck bend in it. You can see this here. There we go. Uh, now I'm going to increase that neck bend out of the piano. And this is a good demo for this because it can show you uh, exactly how this works. So I'm going to clamp this down and I'm going to put a spacer block about the thickness of the damper head. If you don't have a block then you can just use another damper placed there. And clamp this down as well. Okay, now with a, a very heavy duty tool, this one, see, um, I don't know where I acquired it, but it's, it's really strong and it can take good torque without deforming or bending, uh, as opposed to this, which we use in the piano. But this is a lightweight tool, and you don't want to put a lot of torque on it because its end is very uh, fragile. Okay, so I want this damper head to move to the right of where it is. So I'm going to put this tool on there, and I'm going to torque it to the right as if I'm tightening a screw. Now let's take it out and see what we got. There we go. You can see it's quite a bit more than it was. I exaggerated it. Could square the head up a little bit. So I'm going to square to the to the uh, to the wire itself. But you see, that's uh, that's quite a bit right there. Um, I can reverse it. Same way. Let's say that uh, it's too far now. Put this back on. Try and do it in under an hour if I can. Place that about an inch from the bottom of the of the head. 
clamp that on. So now this time, instead of turning it to the right, I turn it to the left. And now we're back to more or less where we were. You can see quite a... Get this in the... In, there we go. Much less. I hope that comes out. Maybe it's a little blurry, but I think you got the idea. All right, here we have a damper in this action model that needs to go to the left. You can see here it's too far to the right and on the back end there too. See, it's pretty obvious. Too far to the right. To the treble, I should say. But um, So we need to increase the neck bend and move this damper to the left, to the base side. So working from under the key bed, which is of course out of sight for you, and we put our neck bending tool right on the little segment there. Now from in the key bed it helps to hold the damper down and uh, even to put a little pressure on the damper wire so that uh, uh, you know everything doesn't uh, bend and torque or at least keep that to a minimum. Now I need to go to the left so I take the bending tool and I turn it to the left. Now I've got quite a tip in it. You maybe can't see that but it's tipped uh, this way toward you. The top of it is tipped toward you. Now you take your parallel pliers and just square up the head. From what I've seen it needs to go a little bit more. So tool goes on. Support from below. Make neck bend and make noise with your tools and then square up the head. Here's a little bit more. I'm squaring this by eye. I can see what you can't see right at the moment. Okay, now I'll move the camera so you can see what's happened. Okay, the result of uh, neck bending and squaring and get the, get the camera straight over as much as I can here. You can see that uh, we're much better here. As we go to the back, we're also, also good there. So, good job. Not hard to do, it just takes a little bit of practice. Making neck bends in the piano, you need these, these two t kinds of tools. Uh, this one works from underneath the key bed, through the strings, and these parallel pliers are nice and wide so they grab the tops of the damper heads just right. Another variation on this theme is to put the bending tool notch right on the little segment of the neck bend itself and then do the same thing. Now this damper needs to go also to the right. Now this is important, make sure you clamp it like so. Make your little bend. Now we're crooked again and then we straighten it out like so and now we're good actually I need to square that off a little bit more that's it